three, two, one. G'day everyone, today we are looking at the Bosch GSB 18 volt 150C strongest drill in the world. Their words, not mine. But we're here today to check whether it is as strong as they say. Also, we're going to look at some of the other really cool features of this drill. It's got some interesting buttons going on down here. But first of all, I need to tell you that I did not pay for this drill. I entered a competition and the competition requirements were that if you won, you had to review the tool. So that's where we are right now because guess what? I won that competition. They haven't given me any other stipulation other than do a review on it. So here we go. This is the drill. They also sent me an 8 amp hour Pro Core 18 volt battery, a quick charger, some masonry bits, some multi purpose bits, and some Daredevil Extreme spade bits. If at any point you want more information or you're looking at buying one of these, take a look down in the description. I'll try and find some links for you. This is still a pretty hard tool to get hold of, but I'll see what I can do. Take a look down there. The drill itself also comes with this massive handle and it has Bluetooth, but they never sent me a Bluetooth chip for it. So the Bluetooth allows you to modify some of the settings via an app on your phone. Um, but that's the one thing they didn't bother to send me. And you think they would if they wanted to show off the functions of this tool. Uh, maybe the app's not available here. I'm pretty sure it is because you can buy the Bluetooth tool modules here. So why didn't they include it? Doesn't really matter anyway because I went and bought one. So we can check that out as well. Now you may have noticed there's also some extra light coming into the shot now. It's the GLI 18 volt dash 4000 C. So it's a 4000 lumen work light. It is currently running on the eight amp hour battery that I got with the drill on full whack. And I'm doing that to just drain the battery right down so we can charge it up on camera and see just how long it takes for the quick charger to charge an eight amp hour battery. Let's chuck the um, Bluetooth module in it. As you can see, it also comes with a battery. You need a big screwdriver or a coin or something to open this. We'll use a screw. So there we go. Take that out. We have a look inside here. You can see an area that lines up with the Bluetooth module. Chuck that in. Just pokes straight in by the looks. Yep, there we go. So that's now living in there. We'll then put the battery in like so. And then lock it back up again. And there we go. I guess it is now installed. It has a 13 millimeter chuck, half inch. Um, it's quite short there, the grippage area for changing it. Um, it's only about two thirds the size of what most drills have. I'm guessing they've brought that down a bit to try and bring down the size of this drill because this is a heavy drill. It's a long drill. It's not a small hammer drill. If I didn't mention before, this is a hammer drill. Um, so on the top here, you'll see drilling function, screwing function, and hammer function. And I like that that's on a separate switch. I don't like the ones that are on the rings like lots of tools have. So having the separate switch, easy to make sure you've got it in the right place. Not a fan of these ring select ones, which if you've also got the other ring there with the clutch settings can be just a, a bit annoying. Not so bad on this particular drill because all the clutch settings on the electronic clutch are down the bottom here. The Bosch has the clutch on the front is for when you are putting in screws gets your tool to stop at the right level so you don't overdo things she's a pretty long handle and it comes with a depth guide as well it's a bit of stainless steel rod by the looks of things you tighten it with the handle so you tighten it up like so in any position you want you want to change the angle you can to almost you know it's just so many options there which I like Lots of different places, tighten it back up again. And you've got a thumb screw there for when you want to use the depth setting. It has a two speed gearbox. And what's this little line here? Well, we'll sort that out in a moment. And on the lowest setting, it's 550 RPM. And on the highest, it's up to 2200. In the hammer function, you've got a maximum of 30,000 impacts per minute. 
And now we come to the interesting things. The kickback. You can turn it on and off down here. And as well as that, there's also something else you can turn on and off down here. You can set the angle of this drill. Now, I don't know if you can do that on any other drill. According to Bosch, you can't. So this has an angle finder built into it. You can set it to drill at 45 degrees, 60 degrees, or with the aid of the Bluetooth chip that we've chucked in there, you can set it to any angle you want with the app on your phone. Now, I'm not a great fan of having to use phones to set tools, but I do kind of like the idea of being able to program in any angle I want, because you wouldn't have to do that too often, and then be able to get repetitive holes on the right angle without too much guesswork. You have a light down here and a light here that tell you when you are at the right angle. So I'm looking forward to testing that out. I think that's a pretty cool feature. So when you combine strongest in the world with the angle finder and being able to turn the kickback on and off, I have to find a way to check that to see just how good that kickback is when it's turned on. I think this is a promising drill, but it is rather heavy and it hasn't even got a battery on it yet. So let's take a look just how heavy it is. The battery indicator is flashing on the back of the light now, so we must be getting close to it conking out. Anyway, let's take a look at just how heavy this is. 1.873 kgs, that's pretty heavy. I can definitely tell it is heavier than the Makita 40 volt. So let's take a look at the Makita 40 volt. This is the flagship Makita hammer drill. 1675. So it's 200 grams lighter than the Bosch 18 volt. And the Makita is still a fairly heavy drill, but if we take a look at this DeWalt one, which is quite a light one, 1360. So the Bosch is 500 grams, half a kg, over a pound heavier than this DeWalt. This isn't a top of the line hammer drill, it's a sort of mid-level one, but just to show you the differences and what you can get weight-wise with a power stack. So now, perfectly functional, 1687 grams. So that, with a battery on it, is the same weight as the Makita without a battery on it. If we put the 4 amp hour battery on the Makita, now this is the equivalent of the 8 amp hour 18 volt that we will be using on the Bosch. We now come in at just under 2.7 kgs. And I'm still waiting for that damn light to die so that I can put the battery on the Bosch. We'll have to take it off and try it and put it back on. Hang on a moment. So the Bosch with a battery on it is not only heavy, it's also very tall. So 2,855 grams. It's over 150 grams heavier than the Makita with the 4 amp hour battery. So this is a heavy tool. It's not only heavy, but it's also quite large. As you can see, it is significantly longer, and she's also quite fat here compared to the Makita. What about height? Height-wise, the Bosch is just a tiny bit taller than the Makita. Not much in it. This is free running, as you can see. So if you're drilling a hole and your chuck's going to rub against something, a bit of timber or something you don't want getting damaged, It'll hit that, and that'll stay in a stationary position while the rest of your chuck spins around. That's something that the Makita and the DeWalt I just showed you do not have, and I do like that as a feature. Because sometimes you've got to get up close to things, and the chuck is rubbing like crazy, damaging up your chuck, damaging up whatever you're drilling up against. So it's nice to have that. Oh, here we go. She is on her way out. So we got three flashes there and now the light has dropped to its dimmest level we'll classify that now as flat and i can chuck it on charge and we can time how long a quick charger from bosch takes to charge an 8 amp hour pro core battery the battery is finally well and truly flat one flashing light there it's got five on here one more than most and let's go let's charge this thing up see how long it's going to take. I have no idea how long these batteries take to charge on this charger, so it's going to be over an hour though, so I'm going to turn the camera off because it's going to run out of battery or storage or something or both within that length of time. So we'll come back to it in an hour or so. As you can hear, we have a fan in the charger. Always a good start.
Okay, so the solid light I just looked up means that it is charged. There's not a lot of lights on this charger, it's not great in that regard. So it took about an hour and 11 minutes, I do believe. So the light starts off flashing fast, when you get to about 80% it slows down. When it's fully charged, the light is solid. So I also had a look, it said 79 minutes to charge this. It looks like we did it in about 71. Right, I'm dying to try this thing out. Let's chuck a one inch or 25 millimeter spade bit in it and we'll go see how it compares in speed two to the Makita 40 volt with a four amp hour battery. That way the batteries are basically the same. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Now they both felt fairly powerful, of course. The only difference I noticed was that the Bosch cut out after the end of the first hole and was it the fourth hole. Once it broke through, the drill stopped. I didn't take my finger off the trigger, it cut out. There may be the kickback control coming into effect. As the rotation changes rapidly, it cuts out to protect you because all of a sudden it breaks through that timber. The, the drill bit speeds up because it's not under load anymore and the tool cuts out. Not sure, we'll have a bit more of a play with the on and off function on the kickback control later in the video. But let's talk about the strongest aspect of this particular drill. When these companies talk about what's the strongest drill, they're talking about torque. And there's different ways of measuring torque and Bosch give the torque ratings for this as 85 soft, 100 hard, and 150 max. Now that 150 number is higher than other drills that I have seen. This Makita is 141 newton meters. The current top Milwaukee here is 135. We haven't got the new Gen 4 one here yet, but when I get hold of that, we'll um, maybe compare it to this. But when Bosch are talking about the strongest aspect, they're talking about the soft torque the lower setting. So that 84 number versus this, which only has 68 soft torque. So what is the difference between soft and hard torque? Well, to put it basically, if you're driving bolts into steel and you've got two hard surfaces banging together, that's hard torque. So doing a task like driving a bolt through a piece of metal, that's when you might get this thing up to the maximum 150 newton meters. If you're driving screws into timber, you're never going to get that 150 because timber has give to it. If you're driving into something soft like pine, that's when that 84 comes into effect. That's the maximum you'll get driving big screws or bolts into timber. Basically, this tool goes hard on soft torque compared to other brands. So if you like it soft, this may be the tool for you. If you like it hard, this drill's good, but other drills may be more powerful. This drill goes best when it's soft. At least that's what Bosch have tested it for and that's what they say the strongest aspect is based on how hard the soft torque goes. Anyway, time to take it up a notch. This is 65 millimeters in diameter or about two and a half inches. Let's go. Kickback is off. Top speed. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Kita on second gear. Three, two, one.
Well, that did not go well in high gear, so let's drop it down into low gear. It's pretty stiff, that. Three, Three two, two, one. It doesn't take long for the mess to build up. I'm now going to try the two drills in the screw mode on the highest gearbox setting and the highest clutch setting and if they can't manage that we'll drop it down to the lower gearbox setting on each drill but we'll keep the screw and the high clutch setting. We're going to be driving some 8 inch SDWS strong drive screws from Simpson Strong Tie and we're just going to see who can do it the quickest. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Okay, so neither tool had a problem there. This is the Bosch, this is the Makita. Once the head got in there, both of these tools cut out. I did not stop them. They stopped themselves, and as you can see, the Bosch did drive in deeper than the Makita did. But I think we need to take it up a notch, so we're going for 10 inch screws now, 250 millimeters. This is going to go through my saw horse. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Once again, that was not an issue for our drills. Makita Bosch. Makita went slightly deeper than the Bosch this time, which didn't quite seat, but yeah, pretty darn close. We definitely need to go up another level. That's what we just drove in. So, next up, we're driving these. These are 12mm by 300 stainless coach screws, or half inch by one foot stainless lag bolts, or lag screws. What do you guys call them? Three, two, one. So she couldn't do it. Three, two, one. Neither one of them can do it. Let's take it down to the lower gear. Three, two, one. Ain't gonna happen. Gear one, Makita. Three, two, one. Well, I know which is stronger in that test. Low gear drill mode. Can Bosch do it? Three, two, one. was fighting that thing. It probably would have gone in had this not ground into the piece of timber. Makita, same thing. Gear one, drill mode. Three, two, one. Oh. Bosch wins that round. Stop. Hammer time. For basic combi drills or hammer drills, these two both do really well in concrete. Anything up to 10 millimeters is not a problem. Anything bigger than that, I use what you can see in the background there, a rotary hammer drill. I like to drill in the fastest speed possible when I'm drilling concrete with these things because I want to get it over and done with as fast as possible because they are a lot slower than a rotary hammer drill and the vibrations aren't great. But when it does come to vibrations, I think the Bosch is a bit nicer to use for concrete than the Makita. And what about speed?
Right, let's take a look at the fancy bits. This area here is what Bosch call the HMI, or Human Machine Interface. Down the bottom here we have the work light. <coughs> Pull the trigger, light comes on, shine up at your area where you're drilling. The kickback light, as you could see then, was on. You can turn that off. When it's off, you'll get an orange bar instead of a green bar. If you leave the tool for about five minutes, it'll go back to kickback being on. The default is kickback on. If you remove the battery, it'll go back to green, kickback on. So you need to turn that off if you want to turn it off. Otherwise, it's always on. Now that orange light also comes on if the battery is getting low and if the temperature of the tool or the battery is getting a bit a bit high and it'll turn red if you're overloading the tool too much and the tool or the battery is overheating. And that blue flashing light means we're connected to the Bluetooth. I can now set this drill to drill at whatever angle I wish. Say what? As you can see we have a 45, a 60 and a picture of a smartphone. The smartphone one is automatically on 90 degrees when you've got the tool without the Bluetooth functioning. Now 90 degrees is one of the most useful angles. Set it, what you do, put it on the surface until it goes off. It's now setting to that angle. Now when I want to drill my hole or whack in my screw, I tilt the drill until the light at the top. Orange, we're getting close. Green, we are now at 90 degrees or within 3 degrees either way of 90. So there's a little bit of movement there. How cool is that? Now if you're putting purlins on roofs, that's perfect for just getting it right every time. I know if you're doing it all the time, you, you basically know the angle. But if you're an apprentice, you're starting out, this is a great drill just to get your eye in. And then you play that game, of course, where can you just go bang and get it perfect every time. That's what I'd be doing. Bang. Yeah, 90. So, yeah, it teaches you to get it right. But also, because you can set certain angles, if you have to drill awkward angles up underneath something, you can set it the same so you know you're always going to hit your piece of timber, get the optimum angle going through two pieces of timber. If I want to go down that direction like that, I know that I could set this and make sure every time I get right in the center of this piece of wood, which is pretty cool. It's super easy to hook it up to the Bluetooth, and once you have, you can just turn it on and off as you please. And we've got the electronic angle finder there, currently set on 90 degrees. The work light, which is down the bottom of the tool, starts off in the medium brightness. Let's whack that right up to high. Yes, I want it on high. Please press the tool user interface buttons within the next 10 seconds. Okay, we'll do that. Boof. Right, that's done. Chuck that up to 20 seconds. Da, 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 da. Cool. User interface light. Yeah, we'll have that whacked up on high. We'll whack that on 20 seconds as well. And what do they actually go up to? Let's go back, see if it goes backwards. There we go. 99 seconds is the maximum. But yeah, we'll leave it on 20. And you can reset it to the factory settings at the bottom. What do you reckon? Is that nifty or what? Trying to induce kickback. Right, what's left that you might want to know? Well, the drill and the battery are both made in Malaysia. Uh, speaking of the battery, Take a wee look here. A couple of weeks old and look, the uh, fuel gauge indicator already peeling off. This is a problem that lots of tool batteries have, but Bosch, particularly bad, my last two batteries from Bosch, uh, exactly the same thing. Within a week or two, those were falling off and I had to super glue them back on. Is it not within the realm of possibility in 2022 to make a tool battery where it doesn't have a piece of shit that just falls off? You know, I mean, come on. Somebody make a, a decent one of these. When it comes to hammer drills like these, most of the big brands are pretty close. Be it Makita, Milwaukee, Hikoki, DeWalt, Metabo, HPT. They're all really close. Um, if you saw my video that I did on this versus some of those other brands I just mentioned, um, it was, yeah, so close. One drill would win in one category, one drill would win in another one. And overall, I just gave it to this, only just. And when it comes to comparing it to the new Bosch, well, how did the Bosch do? Well, 
is it the strongest drill in the world? I don't know. I don't have every other drill to compare it to. That's quite a lot of drills you've got to compare to. And I can't find the report that was done to say that this is the strongest. I have the numbers and everything for it, but I can't actually track it down on the web. So I don't know what they put it up against. But the Makita is quicker in most regards. Not concrete drilling, which is surprising because this spins faster and it hammers more. But it's still quicker to drill through concrete with this. Um, so, so maybe this has a, a better impact, just, you know, maybe slightly bigger impact than the Makita has. So overall comfort, size, shape, getting into small spaces, etc. Makita, as usual with many, most tests, the Makita wins that. It wins speed for drilling into wood. It does not, however, win the strength. If you're trying to drive things deep and hard, then the Bosch is the strongest. It is a very good drill. And being the strongest for some brands would be enough. That would be enough to get people to jump on. But with the anti-kickback, and particularly the angle finding thing, another couple of cool features that I think will really help, maybe, get a few people onto the Bosch platform that weren't already there. Time will tell how well this drill does. But I would happily own it, but I wouldn't want to use it every day, just because I would only want to use it if I had to. Because it's it's very big, it's very heavy, so for small screwing tasks, I'd want something a bit lighter, you know, a small impact driver, something with smaller batteries, etc. Um, even this, that couple of hundred grams, makes quite a lot of difference, and, and just the size and stuff, this just feel much smaller than the Bosch does. The Bosch just feels rather big and heavy. But if you want to drive big stuff, if you want to drill big holes, yeah, it is a powerful drill. And it's got those Bluetooth features if you like to mess around with your lights and what have you. Seeing that I already have quite a few drills and impact drivers and stuff, this is the sort of drill I would mostly use for this angle thing. Um, I could see myself using it quite a bit soon, so I'm glad I've got it. I used it the other day to put up a shelf, which is quite handy, because if the drill is above your head, it works in this direction, see, this axis, and also in this direction. So if it's above your head or somewhere where you can't really tell whether you've got it level or not, then that light sure does help. And I was putting up a floating shelf and I needed it to be as close to damn perfect as possible. I'd like it to be a little bit more accurate. That three degrees is quite a bit, you know, it's quite a bit of movement there. Um, yeah, but a cool feature. I'm fairly happy with the comfort and ergonomics of the tool. I love that the handle can be put in any angle you want, which you can't do with this one. This one's left or right, and that's it. I do like putting them on different angles because sometimes you're in an awkward spot, and yeah, just tweaking it a bit can make all the difference. Being able to turn the kickback on and off also very handy. Once again, that's handy if you're above your head and you just you know you don't want to tweak your wrist when something catches. It is very sensitive. It will stop. It's quite good. Certainly better than this. <laughs> I know a lot of people are after these, so like I said earlier, take a look down in the description. Maybe you'll be able to find one. Um, I'd lend you this one, but it's already booked up. Uh, I've got a few people that want to borrow it already. So yeah, it's, it's in demand. It's been something that's taken a long time to come out, but hopefully it's going to be everywhere soon. So check out the link. And cheers, of course, to Bosch for giving me the opportunity to review this thing by letting me win their competition. Cheers, guys. So there you go. That is the Bosch Blue Professional GSB18V-150C Heavy Duty by Turbo Brushless <gasps> Combi Drill or Hammer Drill. Let me know if you'd like to see more Bosch stuff reviewed. I know you guys do because, believe it or not, Bosch is the most requested brand I get outside of the ones I usually do. So if you want to see more, let me know down in the comments, and hopefully we'll do some more one day. I do have the light to review that I showed you before that I've already purchased. Cheers for watching, boys and girls, and I'll see you on another one next week. Tools out.